And now broadcasting live from Darkroom Studio at Craven Community College, it's in the know. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, yeah. Craig. Welcome to In the Know. I'm Craig. I'm Megan. Yeah, this is a show we do every week here from our Newburn campus here at Craven Community College in the Public Radio East Building or Barker Hall. Uh, we get together. We get we get silly. It is. We we we. It's, it's uh, time. We do a lot of nonsense. <laughs> talk about things of the day. Talk about community events. Mm -hmm. Uh, Usually have we, a nice guest. Yeah, we've got two. a great guest today. Yeah, we do. we've got Cameron Kishel on the show with us today. He's going to be talking about C Step and uh, UNC Chapel Hill and how our students can uh, transfer from Craven to Chapel Hill. So welcome, Cameron. Yeah, very excited to be here. Yeah. Yes, it's very exciting. Yeah, good so, stuff. Yeah, and it's Thursday. You know, August seventeenth. Uh, okay, tell I me almost what. said June again, but then I looked down. I was like, no, nope, I'm reminded. Yeah, yeah. So what happens tomorrow for at Craven Community College? Uh, first day of classes. First day of classes. Yeah, that's pretty so, exciting. Yes, yeah, so we welcome back all of our wonderful students and staff and faculty. And um, mm -hmm. we both made the comment uh, that I said, oh, it's a nice shirt. Is that yeah. new? And you said, yes, it's, it's school clothes. Back to school clothes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I always did it as a kid. Uh, why should I ever stop? Right? Yes, yes. It, we're getting into that time. Um, my my parents love me very much, and they wanted to make sure that on the first day of school that I didn't look like I'd been rolling around in the dirt all summer, which very is nice. what I had been doing. Or your um, your granimals pants, that they, the knee patches had to be fresh. <laughs> I never had granimals <laughs> pants with knee patches. You didn't have the granimals, and they could match the shirt and the pants. Uh, Zanetta, did you ever have granimals? No, my kids did, though. Okay. <laughs> See? I missed out on granimals. Really? Yeah, I guess so. Did you have the heavy-duty pants, though, that you could still run the knee, wear out the knees and your mom would have to put a patch on them? Uh, no, my, well, my mom would just put patches on them. Yeah, uh -huh. I didn't have heavy-duty pants. Heavy-duty pants. Yeah. <laughs> or heavy-duty play. <laughs> sounds like a dance from the 80s. Heavy-duty. <laughs> heavy-duty pants, yeah. Ridiculous. But no, okay. yeah, it's, it's back-to-school clothes. Okay, but you kind of got, like... Back, back in time tie. Is that a new tie that's it is. got I a got retro a look? On. Yeah, I got a retro skinny tie on Okay, today. I didn't know yeah. if you went, um, okay, ready for it? Thrift store shopping. To find is one. Is that a thing? It is a thing. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Of no. course thrift store you shopping know, is a thing. I I sometimes will have luck thrift store shopping, but usually I'm too tall for mm -hmm. the shirts. Um, and then the ties are always just really old and wide. Mm -hmm. Like Usually if I find a tie in the thrift store, it's one of those from like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I don't know, like, uh, uh, it's just wide. Too it looks big. like, yeah, it looks like a, like a yield sign is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, today happens to be National Thrift Store Day. Is it? Thrift Shopping Day, yes. Okay. And I did not know that you were going to wear that tie, so to people that want to know, yes, we did not plan it's this. It's a new tie. <laughs> it is a new tie, but it's a retro look, which I love. Okay. Um, a thrift shop, also known as a thrift store, charity shop, hospice shop, second-hand shop, consignment or resale shop, is a retail establishment that sells gently used items. Typically, charitable organizations run these stores to raise money according to the organization's stated and charitable purpose. The organization may also use some of these items to help others get back on their feet after a disaster or when times may be difficult. The public can donate items. Uh, volunteers staff the store. Go in and you can, you know, Find your wonderful low cost purchases. Mm -hmm. I love thrifting. Yeah, I love it. It's one of my. I, it's one of those things that I enjoy doing because it allows um, you to. It's like the treasure hunt. You mm -hmm. know, you never yeah. know what you're going to find. Um, they also do say this is kind of interesting that it does help. Like, when is the? Oh, here it is. When's the best time to shop at a thrift store? Uh, I would say November. Day of the week. I'm sorry. I should have been oh, more specific. Okay. Day of the week. Um, Tuesday. Cameron, you have any guess? Friday. Actually, Monday and Tuesday, they claim are the best because yep. lots of donations are made over the weekends. Mm -hmm. However, thrift stores will need to sort through the items first. So take that takes time. However, shopping early and often might be the best option for your finds. See, I knew this. I've volunteered at a thrift store in Greenville when I was in college. Oh, did you? Which yeah, one? So all the, all, I don't remember the name of it, but all the good stuff comes in on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And then if you work in the back, you go through it. You get first dibs. Oh, so it's yeah. good for volunteers. Yeah. One of the coolest things I ever got was, uh, I'm going to say a string of words that will not make any sense to our students, but it was an eight-track player. <laughs> uh, and it was it was the coolest thing because it was uh, about this big. It was a box, and it would open up into two different pieces. Mm -hmm. And so you could actually, uh, it, there were the speakers that would come off. So you could actually have a speaker that would go off over here and a speaker that would go off over here. And then you could put the eight-track in the inside of it, and the radio was a dial. Wow. You know what dial is. Right I remember now. dials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was a, a precursor to the boom box. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. 
Anyway, Look at you. yeah. So uh, not only is working at a thrift store good to uh, help your neighbors and friends, especially your nonprofits, mm-hmm. but you also get first dibs on some stuff. So these are some things that you shouldn't buy at a thrift store: um, used car seats, children's car seats. Mm. Um, those I would not recommend it because they could have been damaged. They could have been an accident. So those, that's one of those things that we don't recommend. They have expiration dates on them too. They, they? do. Yeah. Um, now they also included things that are obvious, like bathing suits. Yeah. Um, I've found baby su- bathing suits with tags on them, especially when the kids were younger. Um, Zanetta, you probably could attest to that. Finding, no. Especially swim team suits. You know, they don't get a lot um, of... I'm, personally... You're I'm, not doing it. I'm not doing it. And the other thing is don't buy makeup, because you never know. Yeah. So, um, I'm sharing this because we're going to lead into what my favorite ones here in the local area are. Okay. And they also, um, like they said, like I said earlier, support a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. So, I love the Flea Mall, which is... Um, Zanetta, did you have those, that, those pictures, the logos for them? No? Okay. The Flea Mall, which is on Trent Road. Yeah. And they support Colonial Capital um, Mm -hmm. Humane Society. And I also love Angel's Attic, which is at the um, Annunciation just down the street from the Havelock campus. Okay. And they support local. They also have a a free hot meal every Monday to help. Again, this is help Mm -hmm. purchase. And they do help people get back on their feet as well. So that's another great one. Um, And the other one I love is... um, Helping Hands over mm-hmm. on News Boulevard across from the movie theater, mm-hmm. and they support our women's shelter. So, again, the reason why I shared the ones that I like is because it is also, you ready for it? I'm ready. Ready? Ready, Freddy. Where does my page paper, paper go? Where did it go? The flea mall also has the man cave. It's, that, it, oh, really? That section. Yeah, have you ever yeah. noticed that? Oh, yeah. In yeah, the yeah back, it's in the back. It's in the, back. Like it's in the garage. All, <clears throat> like a, mm-hmm. like Tools a, and, and uh, radio equipment, and there's always just guys swirling around in a circle looking at all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Very don't cool. Don't forget the restore. And the restore. Which one? Oh, yeah. Habitat, Habitat for Humanity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they just had um, another, I guess they just passed the key, what was it, two weeks ago for um, a lady and her children to have a home just down yeah. the street. That so one really awesome. is, is great for appliances mm-hmm. and, and fixtures and things around the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so today is also National Nonprofit Day. So I think it's great that the two of them are tied together. So somewhere a volunteer reads to school children, a patient receives steady medication, a lawyer provides legal service to low-income individuals, a nonprofit funeral home buries a lost soul. Ooh, that I never thought about that, mm-hmm. but it's true. Or a first-time home buyer is moving into their own homes, like we talked about for Habitat. So today, um, celebrate n- the nonprofit day. Uh, things that you can go do is you go and volunteer, um, offer your services. It says that in now these are not updated fa- um, facts. This was back in 2012. The nonprofit sector provided 5.4 percent of the nation's entire gross domestic product. So. Um, Especially, we've talked about it here in our community. Our nonprofits are um, crucial. We have a lot of nonprofits, things. and uh, our nonprofits have been fortunate to where they they do get lots of donations. But it's what they really need are people to help and volunteer. That, that's where they come up short a lot of times. Yeah. So we also promote, you know, eating local, shopping local, supporting our local. Um, I participated in a nonprofit last week. Mm-hmm. So Friday, Jenna's Boutique. Um, said if you come out, I think it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you purchase the bag for $10, mm-hmm. anything you could put in the bag, you got 40% off. And then the mm. profits from the purchase of the bag supported um, Colonial Capital Humane Society. Is it Colonial Capital, Capital Colonial? I, I always get know. it mixed up. Uh, if you're watching on the on the live stream, let us know. Yeah, let yeah, us know, because I know yeah. I've got those two mixed up. I do mm-hmm. it all the time. But anyway, so I was very excited to participate in that. And then I got my new school clothes. So this is my new top. And you can't see my pants, but I got ruffles and pockets. <laughs> They're my fancy pants. So uh, um, Yeah, maybe we'll go to a different camera angle later. And, and show and my you pants. Show your, your ruffles. And, yeah, yeah, I'm your afraid pants. if I put my, my heel up, I might get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> that has happened before. It has. Yeah. Uh, for those who are watching on the live stream, I, uh, do let us know what your favorite uh, thrift store is to go to, yes. right? Uh, and, and let us know your favorite nonprofit. Exactly. Right? Uh, maybe you're an organizer, a board member. Maybe you're looking for volunteers. Um, yep. Please share that as well. Yep. Well, I'll do that plug right now because okay. uh, you know I'm affiliated with New Bern Civic Theater. Yes. Uh, we're actually doing a clean out of the second floor of the studio this morning. So oh, wow. when I say we, obviously I don't mean me because it's happening right now. Yeah. Uh, but if you would like to help, uh, we're pulling all the clothes or all the costuming and, and uh, props from upstairs. And That's we're called the them. attic. The edit, yeah, the attic. The attic. 
uh, and moving them down so that we can uh, just sort of assess the second floor of what we could do with it and, and just kind of do a, some some maintenance on it. So, But we got to get everything out of there first. So if you are uh, downtown right now and want to help with that, please uh, swing on by the theater and help out. Very good. Yeah. 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 And we're going to do some other plugging. Um, I know that there's, I think it's on here. Um, it's not. So also they're going to be doing Stuff the Bus this mm-hmm. week, which is also, again, going back to school, helping those that um, – obviously can't support themselves in, in getting ready for school. So we mm-hmm. want we want children to go back to school with fresh notebooks. And what was your favorite thing before I start rallying off? What was your favorite school supply? Uh, probably either a backpack or a lunchbox. Okay, so I was thinking about that this morning. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite lunchbox? Uh, I think it was an E.T. lunchbox. Really? Yeah, was it metal? Or yeah, of course it was okay. metal. All right. My favorite was a <laughs> soft-sided um, strawberry shortcake with the matching thermos. Okay. Okay. Did you have a thermos? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they all came with thermoses then. I, th- I think so. Yeah. yeah. And it was all metal. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got the soft-sided one. And it kind yeah. of smelled, when you squished it, it smelled like strawberries. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. yeah. I probably was not um, hygienic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but okay. it was still good. Yes, yes. You can find those in thrift stores, too. You can. Mm-hmm. You can. But my, app, my favorite new school supply was the fresh box of crayons. Mm-hmm. And it was always sad if you opened it and like the blue tip was broken off. Oh yeah, <laughs> You're yeah. like mmm. It was so. But um, how about you, Cameron? What oh, was I your love favorite school, school supply? Shopping. Like yeah. my favorite experience was going to Office Max and picking out stuff. But I love organization. So like a new three ring binder. And yeah, I mm-hmm. could put my dividers. Pockets in or no and, pockets? Oh, pockets, pockets. for sure. Trapper oh, yes, keeper. Trapper it. keeper. Yes, the yeah. Trapper keeper. That <laughs> yeah. was now that you mention that, I probably prize my trapper keeper over my lunchbox. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah I yeah. didn't have a lunchbox. I I was bought. You brown so. bagged? Oh, you yeah, you was, bought? Yeah. Mom always had the money sitting out there on the kitchen table, so I mm-hmm. took that and ran with it. <laughs> Good for you. That's awesome. How about Zanetta? What is your favorite school supply? Probably the Trapper Keeper. I had one in college, too, and I took that thing everywhere. Really? (laughs) Okay, you can tell she's that much younger than us. They're so heavy, though. Like, once you put that in your backpack with Uh books, which is not a problem that uh, a lot of students have to worry about now. They they do at college, right? They've got actual textbooks, but in middle school and high school, there's not a whole lot of textbooks being used, so... I guess you might as well have a trapper keeper. So right? back to the backpack, I was thinking about that. And of course, students now, they go to preschool with backpacks. I didn't have a backpack. We either carried our books or as I got books, like in middle school, high school, I put them in a canvas bag. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, ha- we didn't have backpacks when I went to college. I don't, I don't know if that was just maybe a regional thing. I don't know. I think your parents just didn't want you to have a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, were you walking around and you notice everybody has a backpack, but you don't? No, I don't remember. You, in fact, I was okay. one of the few that actually, because that had a canvas bag. I didn't like okay. using my locker in high school because yeah. um, it was kind of gross yeah. and it was on the bottom. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was, anyway. I love backpacks. Yeah. I, I love them now. You do. I, yeah. You actually come to work sometimes with a backpack. Sometimes I do, yeah. Yep. But no, I, okay, I, this won't surprise you. My canvas bag had three brown yaks, animals, and underneath it, it said yak, yak, yak. <laughs> I know that does not surprise you that a bag had to. No, it's yak a yak. Body. Put it on your back. No, but it was a no. canvas okay. bag. So I, I had got to you. carry it. We can't talk about backpacks all day. We though. can't. <laughs> um, so we are here to talk about um, the C Step program. Yes. With Cameron. Yeah, we got Cameron on the show today. Again, thanks for joining us on this Absolutely. weird ride of talking about nonsense in the at the first part of the show but uh, you've got much more interesting things to talk about right yes uh, so uh, again welcome to the show uh, a lot of people don't really know what c-step is right so like right off the top let's just help people understand and frame this what c-step is yeah c-step is Carolina student transfer excellence program so it's a mouthful uh, but it is an opportunity that we have as one of 14 partner community colleges in the state with UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, And what it is, is it really focuses on two groups of students, uh, students who are already with us uh, that are interested in going to Chapel Hill, as well as graduating high school seniors. So uh, we have really two big application periods. Uh, We're coming up on one here in October uh, that focuses on students that are already with us that have a real big interest in going to Chapel Hill 
And then later in the spring, we'll be focusing more on those graduating high school students to get them to come here and partner with us to transfer to Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about the experience of the students that are in the program, right? So if it's a current student at Craven and they want to be a part of C-STEP, what should they expect once they, if they put in their application and they're accepted? So C-STEP is a cohort. So it is a community. So you talk about the volunteer opportunities and things, that is definitely a component of it. Uh, but it is really a group. There's advising with it. Uh, a lot of the students that we get in the program, they're excited about Chapel Hill. They may have had a family member or another relative who's went to Chapel Hill, and they've never been to campus. So mm -hmm. a big part of our program is getting them to campus, making sure that they're acclimated, they know what it's like. Uh, I know myself, um, I'm from Ohio State, uh, so I don't have necessarily the direct connection with Chapel Hill, but just being on campus and getting that feel and that's a for big campus, Ohio it is, State. Yeah. <laughs> and so is Chapel Hill too. It's, yeah, yeah. it's big for our students because we're transitioning them. Right. We're a we're a small community college uh, that is focused on teaching, and we're transferring these students to a large research institution, mm -hmm. and so they can get lost sometimes in the mix. And so that's mm -hmm. what this program really is. It's not only here, but also there. They right. have the relationship ongoing when they transfer to Chapel Hill. And uh, obviously a big part of that is to help them be successful when they get there too, right? So you're talking about specialized advising, you're talking about getting them on campus and letting them know where to, I guess, uh, eat food, like right. go, go get a meal card. Absolutely, and, bus uh, system. Bus that. system, the whole thing, right? So that, because you know, when you go to college as a freshman, a lot of times if you're at a university, it can be very overwhelming and you can get, like you said, lost in the mix. So I would imagine students who go through this program have higher success, higher graduation rates than Absolutely. So uh, this program, I, and this is why this is great opportunities to get out and talk about it, is been around since 2011. Mm -hmm. And we've had, through the current cohort, which we have five students in it, uh, we've had 69 students. And as we track their success going on to Chapel Hill, we're looking at 80% success. And it's great. As the other yeah, institutions, absolutely. too, the other 13, it's the same thing. It's 80% that we're looking at, which is just phenomenal mm -hmm. for success. And, and part of that is that we really get to work hands-on with the students. So mm -hmm. we're working with them here for a minimum of two full-time semesters at Craven while they're doing their coursework here. We're advising them. We're walking through the classes and having those experiences that – we know grow them here to make sure that they're successful mm -hmm. there is, when they transfer. Is there a cutoff time for a student? So like if they've already been in school here at Craven and they've just found out about it, is it when is it too late for them to come talk to you? Great question. So our Associate of Arts and Associate of Science students who this mm -hmm. program is intended for is 60 hours. We need for them to have at least 30 hours to be in the program for a full year. So we're really trying to capture those students early on um, as they exceed that 30 hours, which is one of our uh, challenges in marketing early, um, then we just don't have enough credits for them to be within the program. They mm -hmm. have done so much perhaps through the early college or they have other transfer credits mm -hmm. that are coming in uh, from even outside of Craven. So we want to capture them early. Can early college students participate in this, like get started early, or does they have, do they have to finish? You have to finish. So okay. you have to actually graduate from high school. So you have to be full-time with us as a community college student and really have that 30 hours left in your mm -hmm. program of study. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that way, we get a non-traditional mix of students. We get a lot of uh, adult students and students uh, that are not necessarily uh, right straight out of high school with mm -hmm. it. So it's kind of a cool mix of students in terms of the dynamics and the yeah. seasons of life that everybody's in. Well, I'm looking down here and it says that the ACT and SAT tests are still optional through fall of next year. Um, so what about a GPA? Is there a certain GPA they must maintain? So when we look at it, uh, we're not looking at a specific cutoff for GPA. Mm -hmm. We're looking at it, the word is holistic. So when we get students that apply into the program, um, we are not just looking at test scores. In fact, you are correct. That is test optional. Um, and we don't know what will happen after 2024. The current students that we're looking at are for fall of 2025 that we'd be looking at. But we're looking at um, the student in totality in terms of just their willingness to be part of the cohort 
and also personal characteristics. So we're looking at why they feel like they're a good fit for the program and then talking about an experience that shaped them. Uh, stories that people have are just incredible. And so that's one of the neat things I get to see as an advisor is the mm -hmm. student stories that they're coming in that may not fit that traditional mold of a college student coming right out of high school. Uh, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But academic is important, but it's not the single most important issue. And there's not a cutoff. We're looking at the student in totality. In fact, we'll ask for two letters of recommendation, too, uh, to get to know the student um, in a wider range. What we're finding is that test scores, and that's part of why the test scores are becoming more optional, don't tell a complete picture for how students going to do. And mm -hmm. I think that's reflective in why we have such good success with the students once they make it to Chapel Hill. You know, I, last week we had um, our friends from NC State here, mm -hmm. from the Havelock campus, and but their path is very, um, very specific. It's the mechanical engineering. Is yours specific or can it just, is it a broader option? So it's a guaranteed admission program once you are accepted into it. And it's competitive in that sense. We, we get a nice uh, group of students that apply. Uh, but they are accepted as juniors into the College of Arts and Sciences. Mm -hmm. And so from that point, they have a wide range of options. Uh, now, certain colleges within the university have different requirements. And so, you know, a computer science major is going to have a much taller requirement once they transfer. This is a guaranteed admittance program into the College of Arts and Sciences, but not necessarily specific programs. And so mm -hmm. um, those are discussions that we have. But I'll tell you, the more I've been at Chapel Hill, and this is my second year taking this on, um, the more opportunities that I see that are there that, you know, are just hot, sometimes challenging to uncover all mm -hmm. the options that are there. So one of the things we connect students, we just did this here in the last couple of weeks with faculty there that know the program really well. Um, Arab studies student who is interested in kind of Middle Eastern cultures, which is a smaller program, we made sure to connect uh, her with uh, the faculty that mm -hmm. is really in charge of that and uh, looking at uh, an overseas experience maybe this summer. So those are the sorts of connections that we try to really put ourselves out there to make sure uh, that are in place. And yeah. so the college, it, it really puts a lot of time and energy into this. Um, and, you know, we have a big kickoff coming up here in the next uh, couple weeks that they'll have hundreds of students come from all the 14 community colleges that are part of this program. Uh, they will have uh, graduates that are in their field of study and other supporters that donate to it. Uh, there's a lot of, of financial backing um, outside just what the university puts into it. So that being said, they're obviously saving a lot of money being at the community college for two years. Will they have the financial support as well when they transfer? So Carolina does provide a lot of financial support there. This is not a scholarship program mm -hmm. in that way. So uh, we do partner for the two years that they're here at Craven, which is really cool, uh, with our foundation. So our foundation does provide um, a few uh, $500 scholarships while they're here. But once they transfer, um, that's part of the conversation that they have with the financial aid counselors. And uh, the Carolina Covenant is a part of that. Um, that gets into a whole nother domain. But there there is between work study and that Carolina Covenant, and uh, there, there's a lot there uh, mm -hmm. that we walk them through uh, in that process. And but you are right, the savings, there's a lot up front. Right, there's big savings there, and that's also where that uh, sort of having that uh, specialized advising comes in handy, right? There's a lot of students who miss out on financial opportunities because they didn't know where they were or they didn't have a person to talk to to direct them to it, right? So it's important to make that stipulation that it's not a guaranteed scholarship program, but you do have people that are there to help you have access to whatever opportunities that are there. Right, right. and there are lots of questions with that. And we meet every month uh, with the students, and a lot of times Chapel Hill will send people to us mm -hmm. or we'll uh, have 
online conference with the financial aid advisors, and they will point those kinds of things out. And the students, you know, we're a small group. We have five in the cohort right now. Four will uh, transfer autumn 2024. Uh, one transfer 2025, but those students get that one-on-one question time with mm-hmm. someone face-to-face as opposed to just an email to someone who might not know yeah. who they are at just all. Just a random. And yeah. I, I think it's also important to note for any parent uh, of a student who's graduating, you know, next year perhaps, uh, or even the student themselves, uh, the acceptance rate to Carolina straight out of high school is I don't know if you know what that figure is, but it's it is low. It's, it is low. It's uh, 10 ish percent. Ten-ish it's, percent. It's, it's low. Right. Yeah. So if you graduate from high school and you want to apply straight to Chapel Hill, you got about a ten percent chance yeah. of getting in, roughly, right? And it depends too if you're in state or out of state right. students. So one of the interesting parts of this program is we get students from all over the country that mm-hmm. want to apply to individual C step mm-hmm. colleges here yeah. in the state because it is kind of a different way of transfer. It's not the not it's, it's not the traditional approach, yeah. but we're really gearing this for those local students mm-hmm. at the community college that are here with us that are within uh, Craven or some surrounding uh, counties here. Yeah. It just seems like such a great choice for success for a student and or a family that's wanting to save money, have have a student set up for success with that specialized advising and increase their opportunity to actually be accepted into Carolina right. and, and succeed really, and graduate. And have that community too, here yeah. and there. So it follows them to Chapel Hill. So once they transfer, they're still part of that C-STEP cohort. Mm-hmm. And so they have dedicated people who are involved with them in the ad- admissions and uh, the undergraduate offices there. Do we have a video? No, I think we do, yeah. We got a video showing some of the fun things that go on up at uh, C-STEP. So that's what was Jackson. He was actually a uh, previous cohort before I took it over. Uh, and he met with uh, some of our C-STEP students mm-hmm. this past spring when we were up there for a spring event. So just having that relationship there. In fact, it's, it's, it's so cool that, to still be able to track our students after they leave us. Because as, as an instructor, I'm a math instructor, you know, I have them in my class and then they're gone. They mm-hmm. graduate. But this, you get to still maintain some of those relationships so mm-hmm. jackson is is uh is a great uh great example of uh, success from from this program and i think there were some other pictures as well just of our previous cohorts i don't know zanetta if you have those mm-hmm. or not oh, there you go Somebody. yeah so these were the uh, two in our previous cohort uh fall 2023 20, and so uh these uh this is Lindsay and Brandon, uh, so uh, they were in uh, this the last cohort, and then there should be a couple more. That was for the fall kickoff, and the fall kickoff was is it, super cool because you're at the football stadium. So mm-hmm. I think that's sometimes the first place where it kind of really comes in the students where they are like it's I'm here, in. they're yeah. It's yeah. sinking in. So that's just mm-hmm. a cool experience. Uh, this one we took uh, some of the uh, current cohort to playmakers. So mm-hmm. one of the pieces of this program is to get there and do some cultural events. Mm-hmm. So you know I'm a math guy, I still appreciate the, the theater yeah. and Hamlet was awesome. Yeah. So that was uh, this past this past spring. And then I think maybe one more that I think this one was from yeah, from our discussion uh, with Jackson. And again all of these were events where we're there at Chapel Hill on campus and mm-hmm. it really is starting to sink in for those students mm-hmm. and they get excited about it uh, and they really uh, 
get to understand the opportunity that they have because as you said the and acceptance it, just for it the yeah. transfer is and it's yeah. kind of like what the, that young man said is that he just thought it was a pie in the sky like this was not approachable for him and to um, be able to make those steps that's you know it's something else you know because you, you kind of it is one of those like it's kind of the ivy league mm -hmm. of north carolina yeah, of course mm -hmm. yeah and that's yeah. that's that's the that's what they're trying to break through that it isn't just that mm -hmm. they're are students that are going to be wildly successful that come through these non-traditional uh, ways of coming to campus and they don't want to lose that east of 95 so they have these relationships for these students that are far out that don't see it that aren't right outside raleigh mm -hmm. so completely off subject well kind no of no kidding yeah <laughs> I, you get a look on your face you when it's saw completely it coming subject. didn't you yeah, yeah. okay um cameron's in brand so i don't know if you noticed in his video as well as his right now he is wearing his light blue and white stripes that was um, intentional yes so. I, I did not nice. go by me yeah. i promise you things like <laughs> okay. that i noticed okay <laughs> but, I, I don't have my well tie done. so yes but, uh, but very in brand I'm, yeah I appreciate that. Yeah. So. Uh, so I know we've given people a lot of information today. So one thing I want to do make sure that people uh, pull away from this is, number one, if you want more information, go to cravingcc.edu slash c-step. Absolutely. Right? You've got your application uh, window opening up now, uh, deadline of October 1. That's correct? right. Yes. And so that's we are accepting applications right now. And I say to all the students that are interested into it, uh, get your materials in just because between the transcripts and the letters of recommendation, uh, that can take some time to, that, to get through. But that deadline that's, that's coming students. up, those are current students right, right now okay. with us okay. uh, that do that, that have less uh, that have less than those 30 hours, so they still have okay. enough to be able to work within the program. All right. Great. Very good. Stay with us. We're going to talk about some community events. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, but yes, it's been great. Thanks so much for all thank the info, you. Cameron. Yeah. Very good. So you want to kick us off? Uh, do I need to? Do you want to do the throwback? Yeah, sure. Okay. There's All something right. pulled together here, so I need to make sure I, I uh, give it to everybody. Are we ready? It's time for Throwback Thursday like music edition. What? Like your tie. I need a piano tie. <laughs> You see one of those at the thrift store, get me one. Okay. In 1962, the Beatles, as you know them today, were established. On this day, Ringo Starr replaced drummer Pete Best, then almost instantly rose to fame. Poor Pete Best. He was a great drummer. Yes. He was just, he was out one day and uh, replaced. <laughs> replaced. You are <yeah>. replaced. <laughs> Ripping you out. No, I'm, I'm not going to dump on Pete Best. He was a good drummer. <laughs> In 1969, this is officially the final day of the Woodstock Music Festival, billed as three days of peace and music near Bethel, New York. There I am. Oh, that's you up there? Yeah. <laughs> the following day, the 18th of August, the concert continued with 11 artists playing uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Blood, Sweat & Tears. 32 of the world's best-known musicians have appeared during the festival, including The Who, Jefferson Airplane, Joe Cocker, Sly and the Family Stone, Joan Baez, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Janis Joplin, Creed's Clearwater Revival, Grateful Dead, Blood, Sweat & Tears, Ravi Shankar, Santana, and the legendary Jimi Hendrix. Many believe it was the greatest gathering of 60s musicians and is still thought to be the greatest live concert ever staged. And basically an accident. Basically an accident, yeah. Yep. Uh, also on a musical throwback Thursday, oh, Mumfest announced today that they will have Sugar Ray at the fall concert on October wow. 21st. Full story is on the Newburn Sun Journal right now. How Very about that? cool. Okay. Throwback Thursday. Yes. All right. You ready? Community events. It's the 12th annual Family Fly On. Uh, August 18th, 5 p.m., the Havelock Tour Center, the Eastern Carolina Aviation Foundation, holds its 12th annual Fly In. Not Fly In, Fly On. That's a typo. That's okay. We're going to fly in, not fly on. Uh, this event will allow families and communities the opportunity to enjoy a free family night and learn how STEM education relates to aviation in our local area. Activities... Um, will be fun and interactive and educational. There'll be demonstrations, free giveaways, photo ops, and the Marine Corps flight gear and uh, will be present and they'll have door prizes. So head on out there. Do they ever give away doors as door prizes? Maybe at Habitat, <laughs> you get a free door. Do, yeah. a door, buy one, get one. It's a door prize. <laughs> what do I have to do? Just take it, just take it. Take the door. <laughs> we have too many. Okay. Uh, okay. Outlander at Triumph Palace, August 19th from 9.15 a.m. and or at 9.15, sorry, and 4 p.m. 
Outlander at Tryon Palace is back this weekend with two distinct Outlander tours that take you on a tour around the palace grounds and separate fact from fiction in the Outlander book and TV series. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I'm guessing the time travel part is the fiction. Is that? <laughs> okay. Tickets can be purchased at the ticket desk or online at TryonPalace.org. Tour tickets do not include palace tours. An evening in Old Hollywood that is going to be at the Mayola plant um, August 19th, 630. That is actually um, sold out. So we will still praise uh, RCS for all of their efforts. Um, the Old Hollywood Gala is going to be a fundraiser for our religious community services. So for those that bought tickets and supported them, thank you uh, again for a wonderful nonprofit opportunity. So yep. we love to hear stories afterwards. It's going to be a great event. Absolutely. Uh, the Bonafides will be at Newburn Civic Theater this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. The Bonafides are a group of friends from Newburn having a blast while playing songs they love. Join Newburn Civic Theater and the Bonafides for a night of Fleetwood Mac tribute music. Tickets are 20 bucks and are available at in or newburncivictheater.org. Uh, last I heard, we were down to about three. So uh, if you want to go to that. Three tickets? Three tickets. So Ooh. if you want to go, you might want to We are busy on supporting that. on these nonprofits, we are. aren't we? I That's love awesome. It. Yep. Um, Newburn Newcomers Club open house is August 22nd at 10 a.m. The Newburn Craven County Library at 400 Johnson Street. Welcome to Newburn. The Newburn welcomes welcome. Hmm. The Newburn Newcomers Club is here to welcome new residents to the Newburn, and they're holding an open house for new residents to learn about their club. Join them at Newburn Craven County Public Library, located on 400 Johnson Street in Newburn, to meet the club and learn about their offerings. Great way. I, I actually did a presentation um, a couple times to them. Mm -hmm. uh, great way to get your programs out and talk about what we have here to offer at Craven Community College. Um, but also, I know that they encourage other uh, organizations to come out to again talk about you know the wonderful things that we have here in Newburn. So great way to get to know folks. Um, not on here, but this Saturday uh, at nine or I can't remember if it's nine or nine thirty. It's going to be walk with the docks and um, the at Creekside Park. So okay. go join, listen to their presentation, and then you can take the quarter mile walk or was it a three or four mile walk around the park? Mm -hmm. So, um, but that being said, it's also National I Love My Feet Day. So when you're walking with your duck, make sure you got good footwear. Okay. Take care of your feet. I'll it's do my good best. Health. Yes. It's part of the good health. And right. what do we have next? Okay, so next week we will have our friends from Tryon Palace in here. They'll be talking about their uh, second <laughs> annual lawn party and all the fun going on with that. So we'll have Nancy Fiegel and Kathy Peterson. Woohoo! Yep. And that um, that'll be next Thursday. Next Thursday, August twenty uh, fourth. August twenty fourth at nine a.m. roughly, depending on. How soon we get in here. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we have other things going on. Sometimes we get distracted walking into the building. Yes, it slows yes. us down, but that's okay. We saw a pretty bird this morning in yep. the tree. So uh, I want to thank uh, the folks for uh, tuning in on the live stream today. My mom, of course. Love Hi, you, Mom. mom. <laughs> uh, Valanda Nelson. Hi, Val. Uh, Jen Fedeya. Fednia. What? Um, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Hello, Vicky Jen. Waldron. Hey, Vicky. And Sharon Cochran Floyd. Thanks so much, everybody, for yeah, watching. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Did yeah. they leave any comments about their favorite? Um... Um, th I think they were having too much fun watching the show, oh. and they were too busy. To, All right, we'll to throw it in there. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, anything else? No, I don't think so. Again, thanks, Cameron, for Cameron, being on the show. Cameron, love having you. Uh, lots of great info about C-Step. More information, cravencc.edu slash C-Step. Perfect. Yep. All right. Um, go take care of your feet. Yeah, I'll do my best. Go thrift shopping. Okay. Support a nonprofit. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you guys next time. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.